So, how do you make a good murder mystery? Making a good murder mystery is hard, because they're not like normal campaigns or adventures. In a normal game, it's about slaying monsters and exploring and having fun or whatever. And obviously, murder mysteries are about having fun too, but really the crux of it is figuring out what happened. The players, chances are, want to experience the feeling of being Sherlock Holmes or Nancy Drew and find and the clues, investigate, and unravel a deep and convoluted mystery. So how do you actually create that deep convoluted mystery? Because that's the hard part. It's easy to come up with explanations for why things happen. It's really difficult to come up with what those impossible convoluted webs might actually look like when they begin. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to actually do this. I've been doing mysteries for a while, and when I first started, I, like maybe you have right now to find this video, looked up how do you create a murder mystery. And a lot of the advice online is is fine, but it's not great. It talks about how to make clues and, you know, make everything kind of these webs of lies and stuff. And that's, that's good advice. You should do that too. But how do you make it actually this complex, uh, intricate web that the players have to unravel? Uh, fortunately... After having done it a few times, I figured out something of a formula that has made it much, much easier to, for me to develop mystery campaigns, and I want to share it with you guys today. So the way it works, you start with a premise, uh, and for our example in this video, we're going to say that a, a mother has, has killed her daughter, okay? And once you've got your premise, you're going to make some assumptions about it, and then you're going to subvert those assumptions, and you're going to do that over and over and over again. And every time you make an assumption, you can choose to subvert it again, and when you subvert it, then you come up with an explanation. So let's walk through that. I'm going to share my screen, and you should be able to see that now. Uh, here's our murder mystery. And mother kills daughter. Great. Uh, our first assumption that we're going to make is that mother is evil. That seems like a fair assumption to make. Um, only an evil woman would kill their own daughter, right? Uh, our second assumption we're going to make is that people are freaking out because people see this and people are going ballistic. That's another, I feel like, safe assumption to make. If people have, you know that this is going on, they're terrified and are making a big deal out of it. So we got our two assumptions. Now let's begin subverting them. So for our first one, mother is evil. Well, mother, maybe mother's not evil. Maybe this is an accident. So these are actually I'm just label this uh, subversion. This is an accident. Great. And then our explanation slash assumption is um, maybe mother thought daughter was someone else. Only appears guilty because now she's trying to hide it out of embarrassment. Embarrassment or guilt or something. Um, sweet. So already we've got a situation where when the players walk in and they see that mother is killed daughter and obviously not walk in, but they walk into the situation, um, into the setting, and uh, the base situation is that mother has killed her daughter. They're going to think, oh, mother is clearly prime suspect. Mother is the one who should be locked up in prison. And maybe there's some nuance here because now we've subverted it and have a, like a valid reason for why let's do this other one so uh maybe people aren't freaking out people subversion they aren't actually i know that seems kind of dumb we're starting with our assumption that people are freaking out and they're saying actually they're not what's the point of this well we're trying to simulate what the players are going to think and make sure that every time they make an assumption they're wrong and the reason this works is because the likely situ solution, uh, which is what all the players are going to think of, that's easy to come to, but all the rest of the explanations are super, super difficult. So they can't even be like, oh, well, it's not going to be the obvious thing. It's going to be this other thing. Well, there's so many possible reasons. For example, uh, people are freaking out. Why aren't they freaking out? We can think of a lot of reasons why they're not freaking out. The one I'm going to write out is um, that uh, they know and are afraid of retaliation from the mother. Okay, and that's our explanation. And that makes sense. That's a great explanation. Well, the thing is, 
when we make these explanations, we can subvert them further, because these are further assumptions that we are making, and that the players might make too, so why not just make it go deeper? So, actually, subversion, we're going to say, uh, it's not the mother who's... Um, oh my goodness. To retaliate, it's someone else. Okay, and our explanation that really makes sense is it's someone who's trying to save mother from blame. That makes sense, right? So we can keep going with this, and you can keep going on and on and on. For each of these explanations, we can come up with a subversion, and then once we come up with a subversion, we'll come up with an explanation. Once you're kind of satisfied with the uh, absolute mess that you've created, you should keep on flushing it out and make sure that everything makes sense. It's a lot easier to come up with reasons for why things make sense than to try to start with a situation that makes sense and come up with oddities about it. It's much, much easier going in that other direction. So this is our murder mystery. There's this mother. She's been, uh, she's killed her daughter. She didn't actually try to kill the daughter. It was an accident. She's trying to kill someone else, but she's super embarrassed. She's uh, guilty that uh, she mistook her daughter for someone else and killed her. And the townsfolk, who all maybe saw, some of them who maybe even saw it happen, uh, are unwilling to speak because um, they're afraid of retaliation. But they're not afraid of retaliation from the mother. They're afraid of retaliation from maybe uh, the mother's husband, who wants to protect his wife. And you know that, that's that's a that's a valid explanation there. If we want to keep going, we can. Right now, we're only maybe a few layers deep, um, but. As you can see, it's super easy to create this, this nuanced web. So, that's the murder mystery. That's how it works. That's how it runs. Um, when I make these mysteries, I will make the layers go many, 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 many layers deep, rather than just two, which is the max depth you saw there, and only two assumptions overall. I try to shoot for maybe ten overall. And what it means is that every time the players go down a layer of assumptions, they think they've kind of figured it out, but things still don't quite make sense until they get to the very, very bottom and everything unravels all the way up. And they just have this massive aha moment where everything makes sense and it's incredible. Um, so if you want advice on how to actually run these games or learn more about uh, running D&D &D games, improvising and prep and everything else, uh, check out, I've got a video probably right up here. Um, Thanks for watching, uh, have fun writing fantastic murder mysteries.